What's up YouTube and welcome to another draw along with me using Infinite Painter. Today we're going to create this space theme where we've got a sun in the distance casting onto our planet. As always there's links to everything in the description down below, the canvas size and the palettes as well as helpful videos on how to install palettes, otherwise you can grab the colours from on the screen now. Now if you want to go ahead and support the channel I've now turned on memberships. So if you want to become a member here on the channel and support the channel I'll leave a link in the description down below. You'll get a loyalty badge beside your name that grows over time, as well as sneak peeks of upcoming designs and potentially more to come in the future. So be sure to check that out in the description. Thank you so much for watching. And with all that said, let's get started. So we're gonna go ahead and create our canvas and we're gonna make sure we're using the landscape orientation and you will see the canvas size in the description down below. So once we hit create, and then the other thing you're gonna to wanna to do is of course, make sure we switch our palette to today's palette, which you all have got from the introduction at the very beginning. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna create our planet first. So before we do that, let's go ahead and change our color of our canvas. Let's change the color here of the background and let's just drag that down to the bottom left to change it to black. We're then gonna go ahead and go to our colors. I'm gonna drag my color up into the top left and once we've got white selected, we're gonna go ahead and go to our brush. We're gonna change it to fills and we're gonna use the solid fill brush. We're then gonna go ahead and go to our create options and go to the option of circle. So we're gonna go ahead and just tap in the center of the screen. I've zoomed out of my canvas a little bit. You wanna create a circle to start with and zoom out until you can see the whole of your canvas. And I'll just rotate that around so I can grab this node here and I can just make it a lot bigger and move the center point off to the edge of the screen over here until you get something a little bit like this. We're looking for about a third of the canvas to be taken up by our planet. So a little something like this, and I may even move it up slightly as well. Once you're happy with your positioning, tap on your circle icon there and you'll drop the circle onto the canvas. We're then gonna go ahead and create the texture for it. So we're gonna create a new layer. We're gonna go ahead and go to our colors and grab the yellow tone, the second color in the palette. We'll go to our fill option under create. And we'll just go ahead and tap on the screen to fill it all in with that yellow tone. So feel free at this stage, if you wanna use a different brush, you can do, you can mess around with all types of different brushes, whatever you feel like using. I'm gonna to go to the option of paint and in there I'm gonna use the stucco roller brush. So this one here, and then I'm gonna go ahead and make sure the size is maxed out and I'm gonna to go to my color, and I'm gonna change it to this dark tone first of all, the fourth color. We're gonna use the third, fourth, fifth, and the sixth color for this part. And all I'm gonna do is just scribble all over the screen. We don't really care about where it's all dropped in. We're just gonna create some planet surface. That's all we're gonna do. So just chuck on the color, grab your next color. Let's grab, say, the third color in the palette. We'll chuck on this slightly lighter tone and then just give a good scribble all over the screen, chucking this color in. We then go to the four, fifth color in the palette. Scribble on some of this red. Lovely stuff, just nice and random. You don't have to stress about it too much. I'm then gonna go to my color and grab the sixth color in the palette. And again, just scribble this one on over the top. We wanna have a huge variety of color in here. So you've got a little something like this. You can go back at any stage and grab any other color. I'm going to leave mine as it is. That's got a good amount of color to it. And then we're going to go ahead and go to our create options. We're going to go into the option of edit and we're going to use this option here under edit called liquify. Now you can have some real fun with this. We're going to use the twirl and well, the two swirl options down at the bottom. So I'll grab the fourth option at the bottom here, swirl. Make my brush size fairly large around about a thousand points and just run this left and right and just smudge all that paint together basically. Now, don't worry about all those lines that are coming in from the edges. We're going to somewhat ignore them. We're only going to use what we want from this layer. We're not going to just grab those lines from the edge. We're going to selectively pick an area of the layer that we like the look of and use that for the surface of our planet. So feel free to switch between the two swirl options. Change your brush size up and down. I've gone down to 500 now. I'm going to just go in here and just try and expand on some of those areas just move them around, push them around, create a really fun surface for your planet and just swell them around, creating some fun sort of gases almost for the planet. We'll move this around up here 
and feel free to also go ahead and use the move option. So you'll be able to say, for example, move this area up here. Let's say you want to just move that out of the way or expand on it a little bit. I can do so. I can drag this in from the side. I can really push that closer to the edge, whichever you feel comfortable with when you're happy just sort of pushing around all your colors. And there's nothing too serious with this. It can be any sort of look. It's totally up to you. So once you've got a sort of pattern like this, hit the tick. We're then going to go ahead and tap on this layer and we're going to use the option of clip and it'll clip itself to the planet. If we then go to the edit option of basic transformation, we can move this around to the point that we want to show of our planet. And I quite like this edge here that I created. So I'm going to scale it up in size just a little bit so I can guarantee it sort of covers this area. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this edge. I'm going to go to the option up here from basic and change it to warp. And then I'm going to bring this node in here and the one at the top and try and bend it round to sort of match up a little bit more towards our planet. So that way there's a little bit of sort of a bulge outwards and it kind of matches the curvature of the planet a little bit more. And then hit the tick when you're done. Now at this stage we're going to go ahead and work on a few different effects that are going to go underneath and on top of the planet. So at the minute the layer that we just created is clipped to a white planet. And we're going to tap on that white layer and we're going to duplicate it so we'll have two of them. Then the top layer that's clipped to the planet still here we're going to go ahead and tap on it and we're going to merge it down onto the shape underneath it. So now your planet here is one layer with a white layer underneath. We'll use that white layer later on. Then we're going to go ahead and do is tap on the planet again, duplicate it and the bottom one out the two. We're going to go up to our create options. We're going to go to edit. We're going to go to the option of filters. We're going to scroll down and we're going to go towards the very bottom and under motion we're going to use the direction. If we tap on that and we go ahead and drag from left to right we'll be able to blur those lines out and push them outwards. So you want to go horizontal we want to make sure that they nicely sort of push outwards and you can reduce or increase the amount of glow from the edge of the planet. This is meant to be a bit of a glow and it will be sort of more apparent later on. So I'm going to go up to 38% and hit the tick when I'm done. I'm then also going to go back to edit, I'm going to go to filters, we'll go to structure and blur and we'll just blur that out so they're not quite so sort of defined lines. So 50% looks very good. I'm going to go up a tiny bit more though to the option of 60. So now you've got a bit of a glow there. We're also going to go ahead and underneath you have a white layer which is the original shape for the planet. I'm going to drag that above that blurred out layer. I'm going to go to my edit options, I'm going to go to filters again and we're going to go to structure and blur. And we're going to go ahead and blur this one out and create a bit of a glow closer to the planet's edge and that's going to need to be up to about that 80% mark and hit the tick when you're done. And also make sure to tap on that layer, tap on its blend mode, it's currently set to normal, we can drop it down to say overlay, that will give you a nice glow there. And if we need to later on in the design, we can tap on it and duplicate it and increase that glow. But I'm only going to go for one just for the moment. We'll see how the colors work out shortly. So the top layer is our planet on the left. We're going to create a new layer and tap on it and clip it to the planet. We're going to go to our colors. We're going to grab black in the bottom left of the palette. We're going to go to our brush library. We're going to go to the option of sprayers and we're going to use the soft airbrush. Now my soft airbrush is always set to around about sort of 60 to 70% opacity. I don't like how this sort of works in this particular program. So I've had to lower the opacity and I can build up the color myself. And the size at the minute is around about the 650 mark. And we're just going to introduce a shadow on this left hand side. So I'm just going to go sort of in a curve that kind of follows the curvature of the planet in one motion to start with. And then I'll do another build up of color. And we're trying to just add in that shaded side of the planet over here on the left and leave the right hand side a little bit brighter where that lighting is coming round. So I'm just going to darken up in these corners a bit more and try to get quite a good chunk of darkness back there. But you still want to be able to see a little bit of your planet, what you've created. But we do obviously want to show that it is the shaded side. So a little something like that. That last two strokes was too much. So I'll undo those. We're then going to go ahead and create another new layer. 
it will clip itself automatically to the planet. We're going to go to our colors and we're going to go ahead and grab the yellow, the second color in the palette. And on the right edge now, we're going to introduce a bit more color here. Now I'm going to reduce the brush size down to about that 400 mark and just go round this edge here, just trying to introduce a bit more of a yellow tone right on that edge, more so towards the middle to, rather than the sort of bottom areas. And then on the same layer, we'll go to our colors. We'll go ahead and grab white in the top left and you want to be quite light with your pressure with this. So just lower your opacity if you don't have pressure sensitivity. And just on that edge again, we're just going to introduce a little bit of a brighter look. And you can see I'm just introducing that light source there right on the edge. And look how cool that looks now. We've got a bit of a glow just coming from the edge of the planet there. So you'll have this nice white patch in this area here. Now at this stage, we're going to go back down to this blurred layer in the background. I'm going to tap on it and just lower its opacity down a little bit. I'm going to drop it down to the 55% mark. That way we get a little bit of colour from the planet, but nothing too strong. We don't want it to be too vibrant back there. We're now going to go ahead and move on to the rings of the planet. So we're going to go ahead and create a new layer at the very top of your layer. So tap on your top layer and create a new layer. If it clips itself, just tap on it and unclip it. We're then going to go ahead and go to our colours. We're going to grab the colour on the far right of the palette, so the sixth colour. We're going to go ahead and change our brush to the option of calligraphy and the monoline brush. And the size wants to be fairly large. We can obviously adjust it later on if you didn't already know. So at the minute it's not quite large enough there either. So I'm going to go up to around about sort of the 75% mark and we'll see how we get on. And then we're going to go ahead and go to our create options. We're going to go to the option of circle. And we're going to draw in a circle in the middle of the screen. So a little something like this. And that's fine. We can leave that as is. We can potentially go ahead and just make that a little bit bigger. So while you've drawn a circle or any shape, it's still active, meaning you can increase the size of your brush, make it bigger or smaller, and it will then take effect with the circle as well. So you can see that it makes a minor change. So I went up to the 106 mark there. And then we need to make sure we tap on this circle icon here to cancel the circle shape. We're then going to go to our create options and go to the option of edit. We'll go to transformation and basic. And the first thing we're going to want to go ahead and do is go to our options up here and change it to distort. And then bring this top node here in the middle down in a straight line, bring it down and you'll end up with a bit of a ring like this. Now what we're going to go ahead and do is hit the tick. We're going to tap on the layer and we're going to duplicate it. And then the top one or either one, it doesn't really matter. If you go to your create options go to edit and go to the option of basic transformation. But under there, we can actually go straight to distort. And what we're going to do is we're going to grab this node here at the bottom and bring that up a little bit. So what we're trying to do there is we're trying to thicken up this edge here and make it so that it is, of course, thicker than the ring in the distance. That way you end up creating a little bit more perspective because this is closer to us and that's further away of course. And we can tap on that layer and duplicate it again and repeat that one more time. So go back to the option of edit, go to transformation and distort and just grab the bottom node and just increase the size of that a little bit upwards. And then hit the tick when you're done and merge all three layers together. So we'll tap on it, merge, tap on it and merge. So you've got one ring there and that's going to go around our planet, but we want to add an extra one in there too. So we'll tap on the layer and we'll duplicate it. We'll go to our create options and go to the option of edit. We'll go to basic transformation this time and we'll grab the node in the bottom right and just scale it down in size like so. And then we want to push it upwards so that the gap at the top is bigger or sorry, the gap at the top is smaller than the gap at the bottom, of course, because of the perspective and then tap on the tick when you're done. You should end up with two rings like this. Now, what we then wanna go ahead and do is tap on this ring and merge it down so they're all on one layer. We'll go to our basic transformation again, and we'll just move it off to the left just a little bit. That's just a precaution because we're gonna go ahead and hit the tick. We're gonna to go to our edit options. We're gonna to go to the option of filters. And again, we're gonna go right to the very bottom and go to motion and direction. We're going to tap on that and it will do it horizontally by default and we can increase or decrease the amount of blur in there. Now you don't want to sort of distort these rings too much. I like it when we've got it quite low. We don't want to sort of go too crazy with it. 
When you go to something like that, I don't think it looks quite so good. You don't have the separation between them. But around about the 32% mark for me, it will just vary depending on the size that you've made yours at the moment. And hit the tick when you're done. Now we're going to go ahead and scale that to fit the planet. So zoom out of your canvas a little bit because you're going to need to make it bigger than the planet. So we're going to go to our basic transformation yet again. So basic transformation. We're going to rotate it round. So you can grab the node in the top right and rotate. We're going to scale it up and we're going to move it across so that it sort of wraps around the back and we'll get rid of that in a second. But you want to sort of scale it up so it matches the proportion of the planet, which roughly to me looks around about this sort of marker here. You want this a little bit lower than you probably expect because of the angle and perspective. So a little something like this will do the trick and we'll tap on the tick when we're done. Now, of course, the rings wrap around the back so we wouldn't be able to see them. So what we need to do is we need to go to this layer here, which is our planet, tap on it and use the option of select. So we'll go to the option of select here and we've selected that shape. If we then go to a different layer, such as the rings now, we then go to our eraser, tap on the eraser. You can use anything. You can use sprayers and the soft airbrush, for example, as long as your opacity is set all the way high and likewise everything else and your brush size is small enough that you can control it. We're just going to erase this area here. So we're using the selection of another layer to then provide us with a guide to delete stuff from a different layer. And you can see now that I've tapped on that red dot at the top. I've canceled the selection and now it has erased them and the rings run around the back. How cool does that look? So before we carry on, we're going to create a new layer and tap on it and clip it to the rings. We're going to go ahead and go to our color, change it to black in the bottom left of the square there. And my brush is still set, well, should be set to the soft airbrush. So let's go to the option of sprayers and we're going to go to the soft airbrush. Again, my settings are here. The opacity is slightly lower. So we're going to go ahead then and with the brush size, it doesn't really matter what the brush size is. Uh, something around about this size will be good for drawing in. So maybe around that 450 mark. And what we're going to do is because our light source is over here, it's going to come across. And then these areas over here of the rings are going to be slightly darker because they are in the shade. So we just want to sort of bring those rings around a little bit like this and just darken them up. Now, don't go too dark too quickly. You can adjust them later on, but we just want to go ahead and just darken behind here. Now I have gone fairly dark with mine and if you do too, just tap on this layer and lower its opacity down to something that you're happier with. So like for me, for example, I'll drop mine down to around about sort of the 88 to 90% mark. And that way there's a little bit of shading there, but you leave this side exposed. Next, let's go ahead and work on the sky in the background before we then make some adjustments to all the other layers. So we're going to create a new layer tap on it and unclip it so it's free and drag it all the way to the very bottom of our design. We're then going to go ahead and just make sure our color is set to this second color in the palette. We're going to go up to our filters. So we're going to go to edit. We're going to go to the option of filters and we're going to use this set here. So it is the lens flare. We're going to tap on it and it will grab us a flare and we can decide where we want it to sit. And this is going to be our light source for our design. And you can scale this up and down as big or as small as you like. But for me, I quite like it that it's quite large. It will take up a good amount of space on the screen. So I'm going to go for about a 67% lens flare there. And now you can get an idea by hitting the tick for where the lighting's coming from and how everything's now going to be affected based on where that light is. So we're going to create a new layer and drag it underneath our flare. So it's going to be right at the very bottom. We're going to go ahead and make sure our brush is still set to the soft airbrush under sprayers. We're going to go ahead and change the color to the blue, the first color in the palette. So I'm going to set the soft airbrush a little bit bigger around about 800 mark. And I'm actually going to go ahead and lower the flow down a little bit as well, down to 65. And I'm going to lower the opacity again down to about 50 because I don't really like, again, how these work. So I'm just going to go around in a circle. I want to be in full control of where the color goes and just slowly but surely increase the range of where that blue is hitting in our design and just add a gradual glow out from our light source. How cool does that look? And then on the same layer, we can go ahead and go to our colors and grab the yellow tone, the second color in the palette. Maybe reduce your brush size down to something around about sort of 500 
and just around our light source in a circle just very lightly just increase that glow there and just introduce a bit more yellow coming from it. The next step is to add in some stars so we'll create a new layer. We'll go to our colours and double tap or drag up towards the top left should I say to select white. We're going to go to our brush library and we're going to go to the option of calligraphy and the monoline brush. And we're going to set the monoline brush very very small. We want to make sure that we can create some fun little stars in the background. So I've gone to about four for now and I'm just going to tap in the sky and this is very very small. You might not even be able to see it on the screen for a moment but these are the smallest stars. So what I always do is I create three different sizes of my stars. I'll create a very small one around about that sort of the very faint look to them. So you can very very uh, it's very hard to see them but you create a good range of the stars in the sky. Then go ahead and increase the size up to something a lot more visible maybe around about sort of the seven mark there. And now these ones are much more visible but what you're doing is you're creating a good range of stars and variety of sizes and brightness and to me that looks a lot more realistic a lot more fun as well because you just create a lot of depth almost like stars are so far in the distance but we can just about make them out and then i'll go ahead and increase that again and i'll go up to around about maybe the 12 percent mark or 12 points and just introduce some larger stars. Now I'm always very sparing with these. I'll maybe create like a little constellation here and there. Some sort of like line or belt of sort or triangle. But we'll just tap away adding in some stars in the background. And then once you're happy with your stars I'll add a couple there too. We'll tap on this layer and we'll duplicate it. And either one of them it doesn't really matter. If you go up to your edit options we go to the option of filters and we go to structure and blur. We're going to give them a tiny little blur and a little bit of a glow and to be honest the 50% that I dropped it on looks really good. You could maybe go a little bit smaller if you want that glow to be a bit tighter to the stars but if I hit the tick and zoom in for you you can see they've got a nice little bit of colour around them and it's really come into life now this whole scene. We're very nearly there. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to add some extra colour to the rings now. So we're going to go ahead and at the very top of our layers we have a black layer that's clipped to the rings. We're going to create a new layer and it will clip itself automatically. We're going to go ahead and tap on this layer and change it from normal and change it to the option of overlay. And we're going to go ahead and continue with white. We're going to go back to our brush and change it to the option of sprayers and the soft airbrush again. And now you're going to be in control of where the light hits the rings. So if I make my brush size a little bit smaller than that, so I can be a bit more precise, maybe around that 260 mark. If I go around this edge here of the rings, I'm going to slowly but surely introduce a much brighter tone. And we want to just really show that the light is crashing onto these rings and they are super vibrant. It will make your shadows stand out more because, of course, you have a good amount of contrast. I'll then also add some onto this sort of ring here as well, the inner ring of our little sort of planet here. And you can let that go all the way around the other side because of course the lighting would be hitting that ring all the way across the design. And if you want to you can even increase the brush size up to something fairly large around about sort of 700 mark and just give the entire sort of top edge a, just a big coat of colour. So you've added in where your highlights you want them to sit but also you're also then given a good amount of colour and glow to it. And I'm also going to go ahead and reduce my brush size one more time down to something fairly small around about sort of the 130 mark and just brighten up this ring here just until it creeps into the shadows and likewise here as well. Just creeps it into the shadows and then we can't touch it. What I'm then going to go ahead and do is go to the white layer that we created underneath our planet. It's currently set to overlay and I mentioned earlier we may duplicate it. So it's the overlay layer set underneath our planet. So here's my planet and here is the white overlay layer. I'm going to tap on it and I'm going to duplicate it. I want that glow to be nice and large and I may even tap on it and duplicate it once more. I really want a good strong glow from the edge of the planet there. But on this top layer, I'm going to go to my eraser, tap on the eraser and making sure we're still under soft airbrush, which we are. And the size is set to around about the 400 mark. I'm going to just fade that out at the bottom here and fade it out at the top up here as well. So almost as if we're focusing the glow just here on the edge of the planet. I'm also going to go ahead and where we've got our planet here, we've got a shadow layer. We've got the highlights on the edge there. I'm going to create another new layer. It will clip itself automatically and I'm going to tap on this layer and change the blend mode from normal to the option of overlay. So let's go ahead and switch back to our brush. 
making sure our brush is still set to the soft airbrush, which it is. We just want to make the size of it a much bigger, around about 400, and just brighten up this edge of the planet a little bit more. We're just trying to just really show that bright beam that's coming from the edge there. And I think once you get to this level here where things are really sort of overly exposed, they look great. And if I go ahead and pinch with two fingers, we go full screen with four, we end up with today's finished design. So I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. If you like this type of content, be sure to drop a like down below. And if you wanna support the channel, you can become a YouTube member. You can get a loyalty badge beside your name that grows over time. You can get sneak peeks of upcoming designs and potentially more to come in the future. I'll leave a link to that in the description down below. Be sure to share your designs with me over on Instagram when you're done. And with all that said, I'll see you in the next one.